How did I amass a high-end collection of over half a million dollars? I mean, at one time I lived in a studio apartment in the ghetto with five other guys. Find out today. Welcome to the Extreme Channel. I have a lot of different names. Brendan, John, Ultimate Collectibles, Extreme Collectibles, according to some of my haters. Today, we're gonna to talk about how I landed over half a million dollars in collectibles. And we're not gonna start with, how did I get the money to do this? That's probably my most common question, is Mr. X, which is my real name, how do you afford to do all this? Where does your money come from? What do you do for a living? And I'm not gonna answer that today. I will someday. So if that's why you tuned in, give me a thumbs down and get the hell out of here. If you wanna know all about these high collectibles, before we get into the story, go ahead and hit that subscribe and bell notification. Also check out the Facebook page. The link is below in the description because we talk about all this stuff all the time. We show close-ups, we do reviews, we do really cool collaborative videos with daily content. Most importantly, we have some big contests coming up. Not only some contests that are completed, but we're announcing some new ones and there's gonna be some mediocre contests where you can win three, $400 prizes along the way. But today we're gonna to talk about my collecting journey, kind of where it started, uh, how I acquired all the different things, and a little bit about the future of it. And we're gonna talk about some nostalgic stuff. So it's gonna be my childhood, so buckle up, go, go, let's go, get go, started. Go. So believe it or not, I was not born into the X mansion. I um, had a normal working class family. I had one older sibling. My brother and I, we actually used to share everything. We had to, we lived in a 10 by 10 foot room that we shared. We shared toys, we shared friends, we shared underwear. I think my collecting started at a very young age. Uh, we started amassing large amounts of like the muscle men collection. Remember the muscle men right here? I also remember other types of uh, little toys we would get, like uh, not just G.I. Joe, which I think we amassed over a hundred of them, but even uh, Battle Beasts. Remember those guys? They were awesome. Micro Machines, so many different cool stuff. Because we were the kids on the block without uh, Nintendos and Ataris, we couldn't afford all that. What we could afford were comic books. So back in the day, my brother and I, we would get like a $2 a week allowance, and my mother would take us to Dragon's Lair. What a cool ass name for a comic book shop. And you could get comics for 10 cents, sometimes the expensive ones were 30 or 40 cents, so we had to be selective. And that's where I started my love of some of the comic book characters you guys know today, like Silver Surfer and the Hulk, Wolverine. Also really got into the comic book cards. Uh, that was a big one for me. We had books and books of those, absolutely love them. Unfortunately, when I moved out, even though I was a collector, when I moved out when I was 18, my mother, bless her heart, was not a collector. So all that stuff got thrown away. <laughs> And collecting kind of went to the wayside. And for a long period of time, I didn't have any money. Like most 18, 19, 20 year olds, I didn't have any money because I spent it on a lot of unhealthy lifestyles. And I tried to impress everyone, get a big apartment I got evicted from, um, get a job that I got fired from. Eventually, I uh, got my head on my shoulder straight, uh, went through a pretty tough time. And uh, shortly after that, about a year or two after that, I actually met my future wife who really got me on the right track. And you know, when we started together, my wife and I, we couldn't afford big things either. Uh, we really started traveling a lot, but I remember our first year married, our joint income on our W-2, on our taxes, was 42,000. That's what we both made working full time. But as most people, you live within your means, and that was sufficient for us. As we started to do better and excel, I actually got into Texas Hold'em No Limit. I started playing at bars and casinos, and I didn't become a superstar or professional by any means, but I did pretty good for myself. I played two or three times a week. I'd go to Vegas a couple different times a year. Probably my favorite uh, or best memory was my very last day in Vegas, I sat down at about 6 a.m. I've always been an early riser, as most of you guys know, and I actually had to leave the table at 4 a.m. the next morning. I bought in for 300 and I had to cash out for just under 20,000. And I didn't make it huge by any means, but uh, it was uh, enough to kind of supplement my lifestyle and try other things. And then my wife and I, we kind of got into the entrepreneur spirit. Welcome to the Shark Tank. Uh, while I worked in the corporate world and excelled very well in that, uh, we started dabbling with other companies, building companies, buying companies, seeing what we could do. And when I had my first big payday from selling a company, um, my wife and I were in a very good position. At this time we had kids, 
Uh, I'd finished up school, but getting a master's degree, which was kind of useless, but it looks pretty on the wall. We started traveling with our children, without our children, and we started doing kind of extreme events before the Extreme Channel was ever made. You know, indoor skydiving, uh, hot air balloons, stuff like that. And we had the opportunity to go to the 2013 AFC Football Championship in Denver, Colorado, where one of the greats of all time, Peyton Manning, would play Tom Brady. Couldn't pass that up. Awesome, awesome day. We got great seats and it was an awesome game. The team we wanted to won. And a few weeks after that, my wife presented me with a gift, which Mrs. X doesn't buy me too many gifts because as you guys know, when I want something, I just buy it. And to my surprise, Mrs. X presented me with a Broncos football helmet. Now, it wasn't just a Broncos football helmet, but it was signed by Peyton Manning and his main receivers from that game. Wes Welker, Emmanuel Sanders, Demarius Thomas, and I thought this was one of the most amazing things I'd ever seen. And I wasn't really huge into collecting. Like I said, I kind of had uh, some previous stuff when I was a kid, but I did have some collecting roots from the senior Mr. X. He was really big into movies and movie posters. If you go to his house now, there are movie posters all over the place. Some are autographed, some are not. So this was kind of my first autograph memorabilia. And I got this and I started researching all about autographed sports memorabilia. I started learning about authentication. I started learning about how shady it can be. I started learning about how to purchase from the right people. And after a lot, a lot of research, after months of and tons of time online talking to people, I uh, made my next big purchase. And I actually purchased a Nebraska Huskers football helmet signed by Tom Osborne, which some of you know the story to that of how I went to the school and it's very nostalgic to me despite their current record. And I put both of these above my fireplace, I got protective cases for them, and I was just in awe. But I kept looking at more memorabilia and I wanted to add to my collection. And over the next year or so, I started adding things like a signed Michael Jordan jersey or a Walter Payton jersey, Muhammad Ali glove. A lot of these, just so you know, you can check out in my room tour. Here's a link to that. And as I got more and more into this, I started to become a VIP for a company that would source these things and find them for me. And my contact there reached out to me and he's like, are you interested in movie memorabilia? And I thought, of course I am. I love movies. My father brought me up on movies. And to this day, I think it's a great escape. I actually have an extreme topics about movies right here. So he presented me with a collage from the movie 300, which is one of my top movies. Of course, I just think it's an awesome nice, movie. Nice. Not only was it a collage with different scenes, but it was signed by some of the big actors like Gerard Butler and Lena Headey. I got this and I was so excited. It was amazing to me. It was amazing looking. So I started moving from sports memorabilia to movie memorabilia. And one of the problems is we have a large large house but everything is decorated and I had no place to put these so we had an unfinished basement about 2400 square feet and I convinced Mrs. X hey let's finish the basement and she just thought it was for good taste and we're gonna put in a huge bar and a movie theater room but secretly it was to hold more collectibles so you know we spent quite a bit on that we spent over six figures got the basement finished and just so you know you know Mr. X you have you know half a million dollars in collectibles we get it you have money um, I want to be clear Look at my shirt. I can't even afford a shirt that where the collar doesn't ring. Crazy, huh? There's actually kind of, I'm one of those weird guys. There are certain things I will not spend money on. I don't like spending money on new clothes. I cut my own hair because I just think it's a waste of money to spend money on. However, if I'm flying two hours across the country, I'll pay $500 more to upgrade to first class so I have that leg room and I drink a lot on the plane. Shh. But anyway, so we got the basement finished and I started buying all kinds of memorabilia you can uh, hang on the walls. And from movie memorabilia of stuff signed by Sylvester Stallone to John Travolta, you name it. And then I started getting into music memorabilia. Again, if you've, if you've seen my room tour, you know that I have an autographed guitar by Michael Jackson. I have a uh, Eminem album, an Ed Sheeran album, a uh, John Williams the composer signed guitar uh, pick. I really went down this rabbit hole fast and over a few years I amassed probably about $150,000 worth of uh, autograph memorabilia, maybe up to 200,000. I do have it all inventoried because obviously it's insured and uh, 
I did a lot of research just to make sure that this stuff was authentic and it was authenticated by PSA, uh, JSA, Beckett, uh, Fanatics, some of the, the highest end, and a few of them, the high end collectibles, I've actually had authenticated by two people. So, for example, a Michael Jackson guitar, that's not $1,000, but it's between five dollars and $10,000. Anyway, as I expanded my music and movie memorabilia stuff, I remember I, uh, coming across a hot toy, and it was an Avengers hot to toy. I don't remember specific which one. I believe I bought it on eBay. I thought, why not? 100 bucks, that's nothing compared to what I've been spending. And I got it. And after a few days of realizing that yes this is a Barbie doll but I thought it was badass I thought the likeness was amazing I thought how many different switch outs it had was so cool and I ended up getting the entire Avengers collection uh, of hot toys and a lot of them I started sourcing through sideshow collectibles and when I was on sideshow I noticed polystone and resin statues And I was like, whoa, these are cooler. Could I go down this, this rabbit hole? And I ordered a whole bunch of them. And the first one that came right away was Skeletor Premium Format from their Masters of the Universe line. Actually, I'm not sure if it's a premium format, but I still have it to this day. It's this one-fifth scale statue. And it just amazed me. I'll never forget opening the box, looking at it, assembling it. Um, I didn't use directions. Yeah, I did. I used so many directions. I was so careful with those statues, where today it's I risk so much. I'll never forget the feeling it invoked, not only the childhood nostalgia, but the appreciation of the art and beauty of this statue. And as I ordered more, I started to get involved with some online social forums, whether they were an online forum group, uh, Facebook uh, groups, and I really started discovering that this world of collectible statues was huge. It wasn't like, okay, there's a couple hundred people that are interested in this. There's tens of thousands where it's a regular part of their life, and there's hundreds of thousands of people that actually do this. And I'll never forget another turning point in my collecting uh, journey when I got Sideshow's Thanos on Throne. When I opened him up, he was, at that time, the most expensive statue I'd bought at around $1,300. I pre-ordered him and waited over a year. And as I opened him up, some of the detail and the appreciation just kind of blew my mind. And I think that was, wow, that was over two, three years ago now? Two and a half years ago, maybe? Two years? I don't remember exactly. And uh, at that same time, I was also making contacts for custom statues and learning more about XM Studios and Prime One Studios, some of these... Uh, places that weren't headquartered in the United States. And I started deciding, hey, I want a Avengers theme. I want X-Men, I want horror, I want uh, Batman. And fortunately, I had the space and the funds to fund a lot of these different collections that tied to my childhood. So I started ordering from different uh, facets and it's like Mr. X, you order five to 10 new statues a month and you have you know 50 to 150 on, on pre-order. And it really just started snowballing. And another pivotal turning point, uh, pivotal, <laughs> pivotal, pivotal turning point in my journey was one of my very good friends who may be watching this, uh, virtual friends. So I wanna clarify that in a second too. But Marcus goes, bro, you have, because uh, I'm everyone's bro. I only have one bro and we don't get along too well for the record, so don't call me bro. Uh, he goes, bro, you have $30,000 in statues at that time and you have $300 shelving. And that actually stuck with me for a while and that's when I entered the Maja cases, uh, which was like a year wait time. And so I started spending more money on the displays of them. So I would share brief glimpses of these things on the online forums and Facebook and stuff like that. And people are like, you should do a channel, man. You get so many pieces that people have never seen before. Uh, your, your collection is sick dope, all these uh, trendy words that I don't use anymore. And um, so eventually I was like, you know what? Uh, I'd recently sold uh, another one of my companies that was a big time sucker. And I decided, you know what? Let's start the YouTube channel. Um, collecting had been taking up a lot of time and I had no idea this YouTube channel would take, you know, another 30 plus hours a week, probably 20 to 30 hours a week this takes. I was like, you know, I sold this company, will be good. I didn't know I was gonna st start some new companies too, but uh, so I started the YouTube channel uh, about 12 months prior to this, about 13 months uh, prior to filming this video. Then I started to appreciate the statues even more when I would take these in-depth look at these and uh, 
do different display options and move around my displays. And it's just, it's almost a high. Uh, it, it, it is to a point where there is an addictive feature to this, not just, hey, I wanna buy another statue or I haven't opened one in a few weeks, I, I need to buy something new but I wanna look at these, I want this to be part of my life. I want this to be on a lot, um, or I wanna be heavily involved in social networks. Which leads me to the kind of the last part of this journey where I'm at now with a YouTube channel that's growing like crazy thanks to awesome people like you and I get to virtually meet um, some people that become virtual friends because real friends I've met in real life, so sorry. Um, but recently, as much time as I'm investing into the YouTube channel, I've actually backed off the, the other social media aspects of it. I backed off Facebook quite a bit. I think I, I eliminated eight or 900 friends, um, which was like 75% of my friends on Facebook. Uh, so if that was one of you, it wasn't personal. I've left about 50, 60 groups on Facebook um, that have to do with statues. I'm still involved in you know three or four of them. There's just so much good content out there and so many good people. Uh, you only have so much time in the day and I got tired of you know waking up or uh, being busy at work and coming back to 60, 70 people PMing me. I'm not telling you don't PM or message me. Um, I'm just telling you I might be slower to respond because this is still gonna be a huge part of my life because I have POs for the next two years and I don't see any stopping anytime soon. But uh, that's kind of what excelled me and now, <clears throat> You know, I have over half a million dollars invested in collectibles. I probably won't get it all back. Some of it I could. I mean, there's statues that I've purchased for $1,500 that people are offering me four to 5,000 for I could turn down. And then uh, there's statues that I paid $1,000 for. I'll be lucky to get $600 for them. And I don't look at it as an investment. This wasn't a business venture. Um, YouTube is not a business venture. I was telling a, a fellow Half Fast Reviews, check out, he just started his channel. He's an awesome guy. Half Fast, not Half Ass. They are done Half Assly though. Um, that don't do the YouTube for the money, do it for the passion. Uh, it's not worth the time. I mean, now I'm making maybe $9 an hour doing YouTube, uh, or actually no, not even that much. I'm making about $3 an hour doing YouTube. Initially it was 50 cents an hour, if that. Uh, do it for the passion. But this is gonna be my goal, continue to do this, continue to collect, continue to share my collection, my thoughts, come up with collaborative videos um, that not involve only collecting, but my other passion of traveling, also uh, with other YouTube creators, and then also just out of the box stuff, some things that may not even be related to collecting, but the collecting content will continue on this channel and me collecting and enjoying it. I'm gonna change my collection, you've heard this uh, a lot of times in a different direction, um, to more higher end stuff. You know, four or $500 pieces are great, but uh, sometimes you get what you pay for. So sometimes there's a reason something's $1,500 or $2,000. It's a much higher level collectible. But that's been kind of my journey. And one of these days, I promise you guys, I will tell you about uh, where, how do I fund this? Um, it's my most common question, and it is a video that will come out sometime in 2020, uh, probably near the end. But that leads us to where we currently are at. So I'm gonna continue collecting. I, as I said, I kind of have to with all the pre-orders I have going. This is kind of the next thing. I don't know if it's a phase that'll last two or five years until I find another big project. Uh, it is exhausting, it does take a lot, but uh, I'm one of those guys that doesn't sleep very much. And I'm really excited to where I'm at now, um, not only with the collection, but with the YouTubing. And it is a big part of my life. Um, I would miss parts of it, but I'd be okay giving it up the next day. So if you wanna buy my whole collection for half a million, let me know, done. But I really appreciate you guys, and I appreciate you guys sticking in there with the content. Um, that was a that's what she said joke, and in this 25 minutes I've missed that's what she said jokes. Horrible, slacking. Uh, which is another thing, I get crap if I don't say them, and I get crap if I do say them. Uh, welcome to YouTube. But uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey. Some more than just the last year on YouTube, some of them much longer. And I look forward to the very long uh, journey with you. I was actually talking to a really close friend of mine the other day who was on a live chat I did recently. And they told me, man, there are so many people I don't even know that are fans of the Extreme channel. It's like you have uh, this group of core people that you're hanging out with and it's so true. So thank you very much guys, thank you for being a part of that. I can't wait for what the future holds. We're gonna continue collecting, we're gonna make different parts of this channel uh, just blow up. Uh, and uh, 
as always, going to have an extreme collection, going to live an extreme lifestyle, and we are going to be extreme with some of our viewpoints. And <clears throat> to kind of sum it up, if you stuck it in there this long, that's what she said. <laughs> then, uh, and if you're not a fan of me yet, watch 50 more videos than you will be. But that's all I got for today. It's been an awesome time hanging out with you guys. Awesome sharing my collection and my journey with you. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Take care.